data producer. I work on the European Social Survey at City University London, so although I'm in a university, I'm not a sort of straight academic, as it were, and I think that's going to uh, sort of reflect a lot of uh, what I'm going to say about uh, our QSTEP centre. So uh, there's an old saying in survey methodology that uh, if you like sausages, you shouldn't really watch them being made. And that the idea being that a lot of survey methodology is really a little bit messy, and sometimes as a data user, we maybe uh, not rather know some of the things that went on when that data was being produced. Uh, we have a, an MSc in food policy at City University that's run by Tim Lang, so these kind of things are always on my, always on my mind. There's a huge preoccupation now with provenance when it comes to things like food, but we tend to be very sloppy as data users in terms of thinking where our data comes from and how it was produced. We're just grateful that it was there most of the time. So when it comes to like a data set, particularly if you're a student, one data set looks pretty much like another. It's full of rows and columns. It's got X variables and it's got Y variables. But of course, if you come from a data production survey methodology background like I do, then you know that of course uh, that could have the data set the data set could have been produced under very diff uh, different uh, kind of conditions. So it could have been done uh, quick and dirty, if you like or it could have been done in a more luxurious, expensive, high quality uh, method of uh, data production and data collection. So in other words, this is basically down to the data literacy argument again. Our original bid had a lot uh, to do with uh, journalism, the links between journalism and the social sciences, and about the way that data is treated in the public sphere. But for reasons that entirely uh, mystify me, journalism was ruled out as a, as a, as a subject funded uh, under QSTEM, so we've had to scale that down. So if you've got this data saturated society, big data, small data, medium sized data, it's really useful to know where it comes from. Could be done face to face, could be postal, couldn't find a picture of someone doing an online survey, but it could be that too. So this is the synopsis of our, what our centre is about. It's very much about where does data really come from. Thinking about the qualitative aspects of producing quantitative data, because quantitative data sets and their production are largely a qualitative exercise in many ways. We've got partners and placements, uh, Jackie's already talked about that, and there's an element of visualisation. This is the team, this is Rachel Cohen, the coordinator, that's me in the middle, that's Matt Barnes, who we stole from NatSEM, and this is Sally Stairs, who we stole from the LSE. So that's the team. So the uh, basic uh, philosophy of the centre, as already said, is very much thinking about uh, where uh, data sets uh, come from. So I'm like Rich, I'm going to talk about the, the take you through the, uh, the steps of the pathway. Uh, we're thinking about them very much in the, this kind of developmental way, very much uh, as, uh, as a Bristol are clearly doing. So the idea is that we're basically in a conversion process. So the step one, we take people and we make them fluent in data literacy. That's not only learning to consume public data, but thinking about its production. We've got two modules, lies, down lies, and statistics, which is about the interpretation stuff. Rachel's leading on that. I'm convening a module on the production of social data, which is about where it comes from. At step two, we move it on and we do intermediate quantitative analysis, which would be much more, uh, not only about interpretation, but also about moving data around and being able to manipulate it. We've got a collaboration with informatics, there'll be opportunities for a placement, and we start supporting people for their dissertation preparation. These are some of the places they might be going. NatSEN is our uh, official education partner for the QSTEP. We've got agreement with Ipsos and Mori, and of course, uh, I persuaded the European Social Survey team that they might like to take some uh, uh, students for placements as well. So there'll be uh, lots of opportunities, there'll be a group project in the first year as well, where they go to NatSEN. In the step three, as Rich said, we move them on to advanced analytical stuff, hoping they'll get further than they would have if they hadn't come on the pathway. They'll do a quantitative dissertation and they'll get support from a, um, a designated resources officer. And for some students, they may spend that gap between year two and three abroad. And afterwards, what we want to do is cohort replacement. You know the old thing, People never change their minds, they just die. So what we really want to do is we want to move on uh, the next cohort of people who are Qantas friendly and uh, build up an alumni group eventually who can come back and be uh, inspirational. 
Uh, and just on that particular thing, I would say that given the fact that I'm interested in social mobility and social inequality, I actually do think it's the job of sociologists to get people into good jobs.